Okay, we're going to take apart a transmission. It's uh, 1983 for the uh, Tercel four-wheel drive station wagons. And I tried to talk as I went, and I made a few minor errors, like referring to these as shift forks instead of shift fork shafts, and these as shift fork, they're shift fork dogs. And at one point I said something about when I was removing a plug out here, um, I referred to it as a pin instead of a plug. But other than that, I don't think I made too many blunders. If I was a little more adept at editing the video program thing, I might be able to insert some new new words. But overall, I think I, I got it down pretty good. But anyway, eventually you'll get it all apart and it'll look like this. I think the, the number of the, the transmission I took apart, I believe, is a Z54F. But the, they're kind of similar. The two wheel drive transmission is very similar. It just doesn't have the extension housing on the back. One other thing I forgot to mention is uh, I shortened up a lot of things. Like, I, it doesn't show me removing every single bolt. And when I'm using the torch to heat up around those plugs, I only showed a little version of heating the, the plug. But actually, I heated all around it. Took my time doing it. So just keep that in mind. Everything's kind of shortened up for so it's not a boring video. Okay, we're going to take this transmission apart. It gets stuck in second gear every now and then. It's hard to get it out. Um, usually after you let off on the gas and go on the compression and at slower speeds. A lot of times it works fine running through the gears at normal driving, but as soon as you let off on the gas, low speed locks it up. It's kind of hard to get it out. I had to step on the gas, get the car hopping while I'm gently pushing on the shifter until it pops out. I put these bolts in here temporarily to squeeze the case and the intermediate case together, intermediate case together so that None of the debris I'm going to scrape off of here gets down in there. I'm going to, I like to clean up around here before I separate everything and like around here this joint and this joint so no dirt falls into the transmission. One of the first things I noticed is oil in here so that means the seal is bad. Got to remember to replace that. I like to clean off around these seams. I scrape it with a chisel or some kind of object. Uh, and then I like to vacuum at the same time. Put a napkin over fifth gear down here to keep any debris, but the vacuum picks up almost all of it. Works really slick. Okay, one of the first things you want to remove is the speedometer unit. There's a 10 millimeter bolt. Tab thing, hold it on. Teeth look good. The Speedo is out of a 1983. It has 20 teeth on it. And there's actually a number. There's two numbers. Um, on the top it says 18. On the bottom it says 20, I believe. Yeah, I don't know what that 18 is for, but it has 20 teeth. I need to knock down the tabs on this lock tab. millimeter bolt on top of that thing. Well, lucky that one just came right out. Piece of cake. Had some that were stuck in there really hard. A 
one and a sixteenth. One and a sixteenth. Get this thing off. Works, the spring goes in and out. This is called the extension housing. I kind of prefer doing it this way. Inch and three eighths of thread. Anyway, I'm going to rattle them all off. Get all the bolts out. Uh, a little bit of oil coming out. Uh, luckily, the gasket stayed on. It's intact. Okay, while we're waiting for that to drain, we'll pop this off real quick. Pop that off. Here's that. Spring inside that metal shield. 0.31 diameter ball bearing. I'll pop this off. Inside, long spring. Plunger piston. Seven eighths fits on here. Knock that free. It's your four wheel drive switch. Turns the light on somewhere in your dashboard. Tells you your four wheel drive is working. It's like that. It has a washer. These pins are usually really hard to get out. So I heat up the aluminum around the plug for a while before I try getting it with the 6 millimeter. Okay, I've heated it up real good and it pops free pretty easily. Now inside there is a pin that we had to knock out with a drip pin. But I'm going to put the extension housing back on temporarily. I'm not going to bolt it, but just to support this while I'm knocking that pin through. I'm going to knock that pin through. See, I put the extension housing on. That pin, it fell down in here. Fish it out with the magnet. It's a roll pin, split pin, or what you call it, roll pin, I guess, what they call them. Okay, over here on the bottom left is the oil pump gadget. Get it off, takes a 17 millimeter. One way of getting it off is to put the input shaft back in and clamp it with a vice grip to keep the shaft from turning. And then you can wrench it off. Make sure you, you push it the opposite way. Of what, like you, <clears throat> it'd be, uh, you want to turn it clockwise. If you turn it counterclockwise, you'll snap it off. So make sure you pull the correct trigger on this thing. See, it comes right off of there. Piece of cake. Just remember to pull the trigger, because that'll snap right off if you pull the wrong trigger. Don't pull the the loosening trigger, pull the tightening trigger. The next thing it needs to come off is the snap ring that's right inside here. I use this type of a tool to get it off. Try to get it off without it, with the least amount of expansion possible so you don't distort it too much. Now you can see I pulled the C-clip out. Didn't distort it too badly that time. Still have to reshape it before I reinstall it. It's 
this thing off, we're going to knock back the lock washer. Lock washer. Shaft out. Down inside here, there's an interlock pin. Fish out. Just like that. There's a restrict pin in here. We want to get that off. So I'm going to have to heat up around this thing again. Knock it off with a 6 millimeter Allen wrench. I think I have it hot enough. Another one of those spring shrouded things. And inside is a .31 ball bearing. <clears throat> now everything's loosened up. I should be able to pull all this out as up here, at least some of it. Pull the slider out. That gear. Along with the synchro that goes with it. Put that right back together. Try to keep them together so I know what goes together when I put it back together. We can't get the rest of it out until we take the bolts off. There's a 12 millimeter bolt right here, it's easy to miss. And there's one up inside here, which you have to get out, and then all the way around before you can pull that thing off. There's three long bolts, three and seven eighths of thread, and then the shorter ones, about one and three sixteenths of thread. One of the long ones is in here. And then there's one on this side here and one on this side. And don't forget that one. Now this thing is ready to come off. Okay, this is just to kind of show you what has to be done to get the transfer case housing off. This right here is the shift rod. That kind of end connects directly to your shifter inside the car. And this end of it sits in there. So before you can lift or pull the ex the transfer housing off, you got to get that out of there. So you, you just lift it up and set it on top of that because it's going to pull this direction. Or you can pull it back out if there's a if you've got a gap, you can set it up that high, you know, like this. And, but anyway, you just it's just to show you that you got to get that thing out of there. This thing sits on top, so you might want to in order to get it out. You might have to get this thing loose. The bolt off of it is a bolt that goes in there and slide it out of the way. Usually give it a wrap, pops it free, and I look around and see if I can separate the gasket with a, a thin knife or something and try to save the gasket. Okay, now it's ready to pull off and I try to keep this all intact. You can't pull that out first. It has to come out with the housing. So in order for this to pop out, you have to have it neutral, so get it neutral. See the whole thing comes out, one unit. That way you don't have to mess with the, the detents falling out. And there's little bearings in there. Okay, this is the extension housing. <clears throat> this 
try to keep the bearing and everything together here somehow. Pull it out. That bearing goes in there. On the uh, later models, they have a switch <clears throat> right in here. And there's a bump on this fork. So that would be on like the 87, 88s for the uh, uh, granny gear switch. I try to keep the bearings in there, stack it somewhere where those bearings won't tip over. So that'll be ready to go back in. This is a spacer, got a little notch in it there. It was on here, and there was a ball bearing in there that I already put in the thing. It's a 0.1 diameter, 1.9 diameter ball bearing. Anyway, that came off with the gear. Now we gotta knock these snap rings off here. There's two C snap rings right in front of the speedo gear, and then we can pull the speedo gear off. And then we're gonna knock these pins out of these three dogs on the shift forks so we can get those off. Then we'll just about be ready to pull the case off. Yeah, I stuffed some paper towel under here. That's to catch the snap ring when it flies off. So I don't lose it. Otherwise it'll go zinging across the room. You can needle those pliers. Put it on each end of the C-clip. Bam, it's off, just like that. Another C-clip. Almost off. Didn't quite make it all the way. You hear that snap when it hit the tabletop? Two snap rings. Now I can slide the speedo gear off. There's a ball bearing right there. Speedo gear. Pick the ball bearing out of there with a little 0.19 diameter ball bearing. Yeah, we're going to knock the pins out of the shift fork. Those roll pins. I'm going to knock the two C clips off of the number one shift fork shaft, number two shift fork shaft, using that same technique on these some tissue paper underneath to catch them so they don't go flying. flying anyway, but I see it down there. Okay, with a 1 and a 1 16th open in, smack with a hammer, get that thing off.
That's your backup light switch. And then this is the reverse pin. Just like that. And there's a U-shaped thing in there that sits there like that and just goes in between it. It's where you reverse. And you go to put it in reverse. <clears throat> now these three plugs, six millimeter Allen wrench, I gotta heat them up with the torch, all the aluminum around here, so I can get those off. Okay, I've heated up all the aluminum around these, so hopefully they'll pop off without too much trouble. No problem. Piece of cake. Amazing what a little heat will do. You get these off the spring and a .31 diameter ball bearing in there. You want know, to take the rest of them out too. Okay, the last thing to remove in order to get this case off, last thing is the snap ring around this bearing. You don't need to remove anything related to this bearing. There's two 12 millimeter bolts underneath here with a little clip that holds the bearing in. There's a snap ring on that bearing, but you don't have to take that off. Just ignore that. Just get this snap ring off. This little tool comes in handy. It doesn't get it all the way off, but it, it gets it pried away. Okay, I finally got the screw right over under it, and I pop one end of the clip off, then kind of roll it around, and it comes all the way off. Now we're ready to take the case off, but I'm going to put it in the vise on the bottom of this thing. <clears throat> this right here, you can clamp this in a vise. You gotta remove that plug though in order to make it a good good grip. Okay, I remove this plug. You look on the end of that thing, and there's a magnet built into the plug and it collects the metal. There's very fine, super fine, which is pretty normal. Anyway, you want to clean that up before you put it back on. Now that we've got that off, I can clamp this in the vise. Okay, now we can pull that thing off. I gotta take these bolts off I put on here temporarily so that when I was cleaning, a little dirt would get down in this crack here. You notice how I plugged that? I plugged this hole, plus I plugged the back side, try to keep the dirt down to a minimum. The whole reason I had to take this transmission apart was because it was getting stuck in second gear. I mean, it would run through the gears just fine, but if you let off on the gas so it got on the compression, second gear would lock up, especially at slow speed. And uh, so anyway, hopefully there'll be something in here that'll tell me what was wrong with it. Uh, so far, nothing out here has looked abnormal. So now I want to talk pop the case free tap that bearing through there's the case 
I don't see any metal on the bottom of it, which is always a good sign. Hopefully it'll be something simple. All I can do now is inspect the, the gears, see if I can figure out what's wrong with it. Well, that was pretty easy figuring out what was wrong. On the uh, synchro, there's these little things called detents uh, that are on the sh uh, clutch hub. And there's only one in there, there's supposed to be three. Two are missing. It's amazing I could even shift it at all. I didn't have any trouble shifting the car. It was just when you let off the gas it would stay in second gear. And what happened was there was only one detent. And uh, I guess it was sticking up and blocking it from <clears throat> from this coming back there's something in there I don't know something was hanging it out but that should be an easy fix but I'm gonna have to take the rest of this part well that could be what was left of the detents I found a, a little pile of metal down there little pieces shreds of metal. Um, I don't see any broken teeth on the gears. Um, you would think this would have got ground up in the gears, but I don't see anything. So maybe it got ground up some other way. I don't know. Guess we'll find out when we take all this apart. Okay, I'm going to knock the pin out of this so I can get the shift fork out. I noticed I well, wiggle on this that this shaft moves a lot. There's an interlock pin in here that's supposed to keep it from moving that far. So I'm guessing there's something wrong with that interlock pin, but we won't find out until I knock knock this off. I'm laying my arm over the shaft to kind of act as a back a little support for it. put some tissue down there on the floor to catch that thing and it did. It's a little uh, roll pin. You know there's another shift work shaft here which controls third and fourth gear. This was first and second. That one dropped down there on the ground too. Now before I pull these out, I'm going to stuff some tissue in here too because those interlock pins are in there and they're going to fall out when I pull these shafts out. I want to catch them. I've got to go looking for them. Okay, we can pull off the bottom one first and knock that pin out. Wrong with that airlock pin. Would be my guess. That free. Wow, it's amazing it even shifted. The airlock pin stuck like that. Huh. Okay, normally. You pull the bottom shaft out, but this one wouldn't come out because the interlock pins were stuck in there, something messed up. So I had to, I flipped the whole thing over to get the, the, the interlock pins to go this direction, and I got it free. So now I can pull it out like it was meant to be pulled out. That's for the hole for the fifth gear fork. So we can take fifth gear off. Uh...
The airlock pin hasn't fallen out of there yet. Pull it, it'll, if I jiggle it, it'll come out. Maybe I can get it with a magnet. Try it. Ah. Boy, it's a wonder. Miracle this thing shifted at all. Something must be messed up with those interlock pins. Normally the interlock pins just fall out. And you can pull this shaft out and then this one will come out. Oh, I stick a thing in here, a magnet, and pull that interlock pin out. It looks good. That's the top interlock pin. The middle one is shorter, and the bottom one is long. But it's hung up still. There. I saw the little one fall out. And it looks okay. A little shorter. But where's the other one at? There's the two shift fork shaft or shift forks. A female one for uh, third and fourth gear. A male one for first and second. Can't take that off yet. Okay, I pulled the bottom one out. And it looks fine too, so I'm not really sure what was going on there. This is kind of how the shift forks are set up. There's a hole. There's a hole in this shaft. This little pin sits inside that hole. You can see that one comes up against the groove. This one here has a groove in it right, right there. Rotate this so you can see the hole. So basically when this slides, it pushes that pin down. They all go down and it locks this one so it can't move and vice versa. Something to keep in mind when you're pulling these out of the housing, just trying to have to pull this thing off of the shaft when you pull it out. It's not too hard to get it back on but there is a spring in here and a ball bearing. Okay, I greased up the interlock pins and installed them. It's not too easy if you put the top shaft in first and then put the longer interlock in with grease, push it up from the bottom through the hole. And then on the middle shaft, just put the interlock right in the shaft in the hole and grease it in. So you can shove that shaft in and then before you put this one in, you got to push the one up, the long one up through there. With the grease it, they won't fall out. So now with these shafts here, this one can move. You can see where it's got that groove there. Now if I move this shaft forward, like it's going to shift, okay, it moves. Now I can't move the bottom shaft or the middle shaft. So it pushes the pins down, locks this one, it locks that one so they can't move. So we pull that back. No. <clears throat> Kind of hard to get that bottom one in the right spot. Now that one moves. There's the pin right there. Actually it would move backwards, not forwards. And uh, now it locks the top one so it can't move. And the bottom one so it can't move. And you push it back into the neutral position. 
and then the bottom one's free to move again. So that's what it's all about. Normally when you pull the shafts out, you pull the bottom one out first, and that this interlock pin will fall, and then you pull this shaft out, and the little one will fall out, and the next one up, and you pull this shaft last. Okay, there's one, two, three, four 12 millimeter head bolts. I take those off, to free this plate up. But before I do that, I gotta pull the whole fifth gear assembly off. So there's a little snap clip right in here I gotta take off, a metal shield, and then we'll get the C clip out of there. There's a C clip. It's very thin and small. The metal shield that goes over it. Now I'm going to get, with that tool again, I'm going to get this C clip out of there. All right, it was kind of a pain, but I got the C-clip off. I had to file my things so they're a little smaller. But it finally came off. In order to get this off, I'm going to use a puller. Uh, my friend Randy Peterson, who's also into these Tercels, but he's kind of phasing out of it because he's getting close to 70, loaned me his puller set. So luckily I have it here today so I can get this thing off. In fact, he's the one that gave me this transmission. Yeah, fifth gear got blown out when the differential went. And he put a new fifth gear in it. And I'll bet you anything, the pieces from that differential probably got in there and wrecked that synchro detents shift keys prob created this whole problem. Try to keep this together as I take it apart. That way I can put it back together again. All the unit, with all the synchros and everything intact. I want to be careful when I pull it off of there. as a unit. Keep it all together, I don't have to mess with it. Here, there's a spacer that goes back there, there's a ball bearing. It was supposed to be in there, but I didn't see the ball bearing. Didn't, I didn't see it roll across this. I didn't hear it go ting on the floor. So, oh there it is, right there. It was on the shaft in that hole there. Okay, now we can take these four bolts off. Get these four bolts off. That's four right there. It, catch, it catches underneath this shaft, and that keeps the shaft positioned right. If that shaft were allowed to rotate, it would hit the gear that's on the other side. Okay, now we want to get the snap ring off for this bearing here, and the snap ring off of this bearing. Then we can take the shafts out. All right, I got that one off. That one. I pried it apart with this. And when I, I get the screwdriver underneath it, and if I can get one end up, then it'll just roll it right off. See what we can do with this one here.
That was a little easier. I got the bottom popped away there, and then I just stuck my fingernail under it and pulled it, and it just popped right off. All right, see if we can get these shafts out of here. You gently tap. Careful because you hit it just a little one too many times and then they all fall out. I don't want them to fall on the floor. Okay, yeah, bottom one's far away enough where I can get the idler gear off and the count in this uh, reverse idle shaft. There you can see the slot that's cut in there that was that keeps it from rotating into this gear. That's what that notch is for. Go around that gear like that. You don't want it to rotate into the gear. Now hopefully these two will come right out. Okay. This is the output shaft, counter shaft. And move that bearing back up and down. It's got a little bit of play in it. It's not too bad though. I've seen a lot worse. All the teeth look good. One thing that's messed up, right in there. Okay, this is first gear second gear, third gear, fourth gear. And this is the front bearing, fifth gear. Now you can see those brass colored units are in there. That's your synchro. There's one on each side. And this, these gears cut on here are for reverse. And this slides back and forth and puts it in gear. Now you can see on this one, there's a detent right there. But over here, just an empty hole, another empty hole. Two detents are missing. See how that detent pops up there? There. It's supposed to fit in that notch there that's in the synchro. I don't know if you can see it there. But anyway, missing two detents. So I'm going to have to take this the C clip off here and pull this gear off and yeah I'll try to get that C clip out of there Hopefully it didn't distort too much. Looks pretty good. Doesn't look elongated like it got distorted. I did a good job getting that baby off. Okay, now you can see there's this unit here. This unit there's a little notch right there. There's a ball bearing we're going to see here in a minute. Okay, let, don't let the bearing fall out of there. It's better just to keep it in there. Put this back in so I remember which side goes which. That's a synchro. 
See where it's a little chewed up along the edges where these slots are where the detents go in. But it's nothing serious. It looks like one tooth is busted off there. It looks like that synchro is worn out because there should be a gap between the synchro and the gear. And there's not. Although it still worked all right in the car. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's toast. And right here is that ball bearing I was telling you about. 0.19. This is your slider. Actually shifts the gears. That little thing right there is called a detent. Most of the bevel is facing that way. I don't think it really makes any difference. Usually they're facing forward. That's a detent. It's got the number 15 on the back side. This is the spring clip that holds the pushes out on the detents. Now this this hub, if I could heat it up with a torch, it'd probably come right off. I might do that, but I gotta clean off all the oil before I try doing that. But I don't have a puller long enough to reach that full distance. That's called the intermediate plate. Everything was mounted in there. There's a bearing, needle bearing there. This is the input shaft, the upper roller bearing. The infamous one is when it goes bad, your tranny makes noise until you push in the clutch and it quiets down. And you can't get that bearing anymore. It's going to need to be cleaned up a little bit. I'll just wipe out, try to get all the little metal pieces out of it. So I wanted to free up the vise so I could keep that hub up with the torch. I cleaned all the oil off the top and around it as much as I could. So it wouldn't stink the place up. Try to heat it up kind of evenly. And then try to pull it off of there. It moves a little bit. So it shouldn't take too much to get it off. Okay, so I got it hot. I use this big drift punch. Just kind of tapped it lightly started to move so I think I'll be able to get it off. tapping very hard and it, it's moving slowly a little bit at a time kind of spread the thing around a little bit here Make sure it comes off evenly I 
I'll put this back on, I'll be heating it up, but I'll be also putting the shaft somewhere really cold, like in the refrigerator all night. And then first thing in the morning, I'll heat up, and it should just slide right on there. Done it before that way. I think I'd be able to grab it and pull it off there now. Just in case it's a little too warm to handle. There. Yeah, it's not too hot. So it looks like the side that sticks out the most is goes forward. And you can see that snap ring in there. It holds the detents. So the recessed side goes this side, the protruded side goes forward. And then this is the synchro ring. Doesn't look too bad. That is second gear. Yeah, I think that synchro is pretty well worn too. When you push on these, it should lock real good. This one doesn't lock up. It's uh, pretty worn and there's there's no gap hardly at all between it. Hopefully I'll have some other synchros around that I can throw in there. But it's amazing how far, how bad the synchro is and it still works and how with missing two of those detents it still shifted good. I mean you could feel a little bit when you pulled in the second gear but just not much. It was only on low speeds. At higher speeds you didn't notice it. There was no problem shifting the first, so well, there's no space between for that gear and the synchro. <laughs> there's no space. I'd say these synchros are toast, so I'm gonna have to. Uh, in order to get these off, you got to pull. You gotta pull that off to get all this stuff off. So anyway, you can see here's where we removed everything. This is a this is a permanent fixture right there. So everything comes off this way, and now all this stuff goes off that way. This has to come off. It's a spline. That's the connection to the differential. And usually you have to heat that up, put a puller on it, pull it off. Uh, bearing feels pretty good. It's quiet, tight, but these synchros, the space, the you know, measure the space between there and man, there's there's nothing, no space. They're gone. I've never seen synchros that bad out of the ten or so transmissions I've taken apart. This big bearing here feels real good. Man, usually when you take them off you can wiggle them just a little bit. This one's solid. It's quiet too. So that bearing will be good. Okay, thanks to my friend Randy Peterson loaning me his puller set. I can pull this. I put this bearing separator on upside down. I'm going to heat this up with a torch get warmed up and then I'm going to start cranking that nut, tighten it up, see if she comes off. Today I'm breaking out the big gun, the map gas. Moving. <clears throat> Make sure when you're clamping your vise, you have some copper shields on your vise so you don't chew up the shaft. Came off pretty nicely. I had to make a spacer to drop inside there. Made out of an old rifle barrel that my grandpa had laying around. Short piece of octagonal steel. <clears throat> okay, now there's a C clip on there, I gotta get off. <clears throat> I 
she clip. <clears throat> the OD is about one and an eighth. ID fifteen sixteenths minus one thirty second, wherever that is. The thickness a little over a sixteenth thick. Okay, same setup. I had to flip the bearing puller over to get fifth gear off. It's not on there very tight. Not taking much to get it off either. So I pulled that off first. Which is on the end of that. Pulled fifth gear off. Mark this top. Make sure I put it on the same way. Here's our angle in that way. Looks like the same no matter how you flip it. So it probably doesn't matter how you put it on. Now we got to take our C clip off. We'll get that bearing off. I'm a little trouble getting the C clip off. So I, I got the tip of it up. And then I slip a small screwdriver underneath it to hold it. And then while I was up in the air, I slipped this piece of metal under it. And what I'm going to do, i got to get another piece of metal to put under here. But I'm just going to walk this thing around. And it should pop that clip right off of there. Okay, i got the piece of metal stuck under here to keep that end up. Walk the other one around. Hopefully. I'll pop right out of there. I hope. Maybe not. There. Now it's free. I should be able to get it off. Okay, I got it off. It measures uh, a one and eighth diameter on the outside. A little under fifteen sixteenths, about a thirty second under fifteen sixteenths on the ID and the thickness is a little over a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to try to get that bearing off. Not much grip in it down here. I don't know if it's going to work. Well, I had to do some messing around, but I finally got it. I turned the bearing puller upside down. And now it's coming, but boy, it's on there tight. Well, that's a tough one. I repositioned and recentered everything. And, oh, there, finally. Holy cow. She's free. And I gotta pull this plate off next. Some kind of a bearing plate. Underneath that, there's a little set of roller bearings. And now there's another C clip to take off. That's the one where I'm going to use the needle nose pliers and pop it off. Never mind my antenna. Okay, this is fourth gear. I don't know what we're going to find underneath there. Looks like there's a roller bearing, a couple of halves. I'll take those off. I'm going to clean my hands up. Two 
two halves. I'm going to drop them back into the bearing. I mean into the gear. Drop them back in there so they're in the same position for reinstallation. Synchro. And there's another bearing down in there with them thin ones. There's a spacer right here. Oops. I'm going to knock that C clip off. Hopefully, all that tissue paper will contain the C clip when it goes flying. I'll be able to find it. Didn't contain it too well, but I see where it went. The C clip measures approximately 1.154 outside, approximately 0.895 inside, thickness back 0.11. There's a slider. See the detents fell out. There's a spring behind each detent. And there it is. Three springs, three detents. And slider. And there's a bearing down inside there. Small spacer. It's one point two one three OD. I wait point one point oh seven and the thickness is point oh eight two. The detent the the total width is point one nine point nine four seven wide vertically point one five four and this way point two one two that's for uh, between third and fourth gear bearing goes up against the hub now we just got to get the hub off okay, this is one I just pulled out I stuck a feeler gauge in between the synchro and it was 0.013. This is another transmission I had lying around. It's 0.012. This one is 0.030. So that's practically a brand new synchro in there. But even at 0.013, this thing still shifted fine. Not much gap though. It's getting down there. Okay, I've been trying to get that thing off. I tried heating this up. I tried tapping it off. I tried putting a puller back here on it and pulling it. And I tried putting this support it and tried knocking against that. I couldn't get that thing to budge. So I'm not even going to take it apart. But you really need a puller. It reaches all the way to that gear and all the way out to here to pull that whole thing off. I've got a good one over here that's got a good synchro in it, so I'm just going to put that in the car, call it good.